Hi there. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the increments formula and what that's all about. So um, we have talked about um, the derivative here and said that the derivative is the limit as delta x tends to 0, delta y over delta x. Okay a small change in y over a small change in x, which we use delta. So <clears throat> for when delta x is really small, okay, then dy dx is approximately equal to delta y over delta x, a small change in y over a small change in x, when the delta x is getting really, really small. So therefore we could say, a bit of rearranging here, that a change in y is approximately dy dx, the derivative, times delta x, times that small change in x. We call this the increments formula, and I'm going to show you a few examples of how we apply this thing. All right, so let's look at this one. We've got a curve here, and I want to know what's the approximate change in the y value when x changes from 2 to 2.01. So we want to know what's the approximate change in y given this change here. So we know the approximate change in y is dy dx times the change, the small change in x. Okay, so here dy dx is 9x squared plus 2 and the change in x is 0.01. So we know the x value here. We know the x value there is 2. So we're then just going to substitute it in there. So 9 times 2 squared, 9 times 4, 36 plus 2 is 38 times 0 0.01. So we get 0 0.38. So the approximate change in y here is 0 0.38. So if you knew what the y value was, at x equals 2, which you could easily do just by substituting it into there, you could then work out what the approximate y value was. Okay, So it's just 0.38 more in this case. So there's your first example. Okay, check this one out here. We want to um, find the approximate value of the square root of 103. We know the square root of 100 is 10, so What's going on if we just, you know, increase by 3? So here's how you do it. We've got the derivative here, a half x to the minus a half. We know f of 100 here. If f of x is root x, we know f of 100 is 10. We want to know what f of 103 is, okay? So um, the derivative at x equals 100 is a half uh, x to the minus a half. So half times 1 over 10, so that gives us 0 0.05. So the increments formula now, dy dx at x equals 10, or sorry, x equals 100, where we started with, is 10. The change in x is 3, so we've gone from, from 100 to 103. So that then gives us 0 0.15. Sorry, dy dx there. Sorry, big pun. There we go. We've worked it out. So the derivative when x equals 10 is 0 0.05. So the change in the y value is 0 0.15. In other words, we've gone from uh, square root of 100, which is 10, up to 10.15. So the answer here, our approximation, is 10.15. And that actually works out to be pretty close. Okay, what about this one? We've got a square. Uh, it's actually really terrible. Draw this thing. Pretty terrible. You get the idea. We've got a square going, and I want to know the change in the area of the square when the sides are increased from 15 centimeters up to 15.5 centimeters. So yeah, you can work this out, but we want to use the increments formula and see how that works. Okay. So the change in y is approximately dy dx times the change in x, okay? So we can see the change in x here is 0.5 centimetres. Um, I'll do this in terms of a for area. dy dx 
times delta x. Okay, so the change in the area is about dA dx. So here we know that the area is x squared. Okay, x is just the length of the side of your square. So dA dx here is 2x times the change in x, which is 0 0.5. Okay, where do we start? We started with x is equal to 15. So that's what you have to substitute in here for x. So 2 times 15 times 0 0.5. So we get 30 times 0 0.5, 15. In this case, it's centimeter squared. The approximate change in the area here, when we increase the length of the side, in this case here, is about 15 centimeters squared. So here's another question that uses this increments formula. We've got a formula for v. v equals 3x to the 4. Um, given that x changes by 1%, what's the percentage change in v? Okay, tricky. So um, the percentage change here, you know, when we're doing percentage change, it's the change over the original, okay? So we've got to remember the old percentage change formula. So the percentage change in v is that. I guess times by 100. That's the percentage change. The change in the value divided by the original value times 100 to convert it to a percentage. Okay. So if in this case here, we that's what we want to find. What's the change in V? We know that the change in X is 1%. So we know that delta X over X is 0 0.01. Okay. So times that by 100, you get 1%. Okay, let's use the increments formula then. The change in V is approximately the VDX, the value of the derivative, times a small change in X. Okay, so <clears throat> let's write down what we know here. We know dVDX, don't we? dVDX is just, for example, 12x squared. small change in x. Cool. So um, if we now force this thing like this. So we divide both sides by v so that we can get the thing that we want, that percentage change in v. So delta v over v, that's the thing that we want, is equal to 12x squared times a small change in x divided by v, and we know what v is, v is 3x to the 4. This one's a bit trickier, right? 3x to the 4. Okay, so I simplify over on this side here. We've got 4 and x squared, cancel out with that one there. We've got 4 over x times delta x. And isn't this nice? Because delta x divided by x is the thing we've got. Delta x. And we know what that is, delta x over x. We've got that up here. That is 0 0.01. 4 times 0 0.01, which is 0 0.04. There we go. So the percentage change in V, delta V over V, is 0 0.04. Therefore, there's a 4% change in V. Okay. 